Hello and welcome. Um, my name is Bunny O'Reardon. I'm involved in a new group that's called Middleton Bike Project. And the aim of our project is really to not, we, we, we kind of have the model that we're, let's talk through bikes. Um, the origins of this project, um, it, it's kind of unfolded up here in a place called Shannon Street in Cork City. And we have over the last number of years been working on bikes to varying degrees and various levels of repairs and upgrades etc and possibly eight nine months ago we decided to undertake a project to actually rebuild and upgrade the bike completely and that bike is here on my right it's, it's an rd 250 lc yamaha that's a 1981 and i think before i go any further it's important to really talk about the history of the bike and how this project and how this bike actually came about to be the first project in completion and as I say, it's a 1981 bike. When, when I was young, when I was a kid, about 16 and 17, these were the bikes uh, that kind of everybody had. The guys with money and they wanted speed, these are the ones. You know. um, I didn't at that time have, or wasn't in a position to buy one of these bikes, um, but I did drive one. And I remember the very first experience of driving it. And it was something that brought a smile from ear to ear. You know, it was just amazing. The handle so well, the power. I mean, it was really, really a great bus. You know? So anyway, you know, life went on and along the way, I got married and got divorced and, and, and all this kind of stuff happened. But the, the reality is way back in about 19, sorry, 2006, I was in a better position financially and I started buying a number of bikes throughout that year. And it was a hobby. Um, it was a hobby myself and my son did, really. Um, evening time we spent scanning eBay and scanning various sites. And as I say, we bought a number of bikes, mainly they came from the UK. Um, this particular bike, I saw it. I, re I wanted the 350LC. When I came across this one, I saw it was very genuine. I saw the mileage was low, and it was kind of had all of the criteria that I wanted. So I bought it, and it was in the north of England, Newcastle. Um, but it was kind of coming into winter time, and I decided that I didn't particularly want to take a chance on an old bike driving it back and I didn't want to take that gamble and it was getting cold as well and so I actually bought a, a, a bike or sorry I bought a van in the south of England and Kian, my son and myself we headed off on a Friday evening and we flew into um, the south of England and we picked up the van headed off up to Newcastle and I think we arrived at about midnight we picked up the bike stayed overnight and drove back home to, to, to Ireland the following day in that 24 hour period we covered a thousand miles um, and we had great fun and we had great bonding and all that kind of stuff. Um, along the way, you know, as I said, my marriage went at that time. So when I did a lot of bikes we had, it just got put into storage. And, and you know, they, they were kind of, um, they weren't primary purpose at that point. So it was in storage for a number of years. Um, but around 2009, the early stages of 2009, um, things weren't going well for my, my, my son. and. and Two of his friends actually ended up uh, dying by suicide. So, so my son was in a very raw place, and um, we ended up anyway on one particular day that I gave him a spin off this bike again. Um, and when he came back, he actually had this smile again. He had he had this most amazing smile, even even though he was in a very painful place. He had an amazing smile. It was the one that I identified with when I was a kid, and it was ear to ear. And he just loved this bike. And you know what I did was I said to him, you know, he was. Just 17 and a half at that point, and I said, Look, I'll give it to you for your 18th birthday. Um, and, and he was quite, you know, he, he was quite happy with that. It was something, but unfortunately, you know, later on that year, he actually he ended up dying, and he ended up dying by suicide. Um, and everything absolutely took a backseat. Bikes didn't matter, um, work, life, nothing really mattered. It was just a matter of survival. And we were back to base, base survival levels. It was like somebody had literally lobbed a grenade into the family. And, you know, it, it was a horrendous situation for everybody. You know, nobody escapes. But um, in the following year, I remember, you know, when I was searching, I was searching for connection with him, and I was searching for um, purpose in my life, purpose to stay alive. And, um, you know, I decided to take out this bike and get her up and running. And, for his 18th birthday, I brought it up to his graveyard. Up to his grave, sorry, in the graveyard. And I remember I just, um, you know, I said, look, I've kept my promise, you know, the bike is there. And, um, and that's the way it's going to be, you know. So, 
I didn't feel any more connected to him by, by kind of having this bike and by driving it and whatever. And the bike got lost again a little bit. I was left out in the weather for another year. And finally, I, um, I ended up bringing him to my apartment, you know. And uh, that was an interesting, that was an interesting experience, an interesting bit of fun, you know. Uh, myself and a few of my family. And we took, it, we took off a few bits off it and we lifted it up physically up the stairs into my apartment. And it stayed there for five years. Um, I literally used it as a clothes hanger. Um, in that period, you know, life is moving on. I suppose we're all kind of getting a bit better and whatever. We began getting interests and becoming more interested in community work, more interested back in, in the bikes. But it was a hit and miss thing, all this. But um, what happened was, about a year and a half ago, I ended up taking it from my apartment. And I brought the bike up here to Shannon Street where I let it sit. And myself and uh, a group of guys, we got together and we decided this would be the first project. And we decided that we're going to go all the way with this. We're going to strip it down completely. We're going to refurbish it. We have either repaired or replaced or refurbished every component on this bike. And we're at the closing stages of the rebuild. And we thought this is going to be a fantastic um, opportunity to catch it in video form. And we really want to put it together. But ultimately, myself and a group of guys have decided that if this was to be successful, that we will take this project and we'll actually bring it back down to a locality, which is in Middleton. And we've decided as a community group, we're actually going to get together. We're going to do our own bit of funding. And, but we're going to continue to do projects like this. We have another half a dozen projects already lined up. Um, and this is, it's just been an amazing experience. We hope, as time goes on in the next few weeks, that we put together another few videos. We put together this bike, as it fires up for the first time in, in some eight, nine years. You know? We hope that um, people will get the same passion that we get on with it, the same, the same desire to kind of continue and get back into the community again at many different levels. We hope that the project that we're actually going to concentrate on is something that will give, I suppose, direction and empowerment within kind of communities where people can come and I suppose, you know, try to understand what's the purpose of it, what are we trying to, to actually achieve. And I suppose ultimately what we're trying to achieve is, is, is quite simple. You know, one of the hardest things, you know, we're, we're kind of trying to figure out what's the purpose of the group. But ultimately it's well-being. It's well-being for for men, for women, it's not going to be restricted to, to, to men only or, or, or whatever. This is actually going to be a well-being group and everybody is welcome. Everybody is welcome, you know, at any level that anybody wants to get involved in. You know, we hope to um, continue to say with a number of projects in, in, in this year. Um, we have tremendous, we have tremendous desire to make this project work well and to make it viable, to make it self-sustainable. Um, and we reckon that it, it kind of takes all the boxes in a lot of different areas. It's something that ultimately, you know, what we've also realized as a group, as a, as, a, as a group here, what we've realized is everybody, everybody runs into difficulties at times in their lives. And everybody has probably a difficulty in asking for help or for support, you know. So what are we about? Well, we would hope that when someone needs a bit of support, when someone actually is inside an environment, that they would be in a position to maybe become empowered, to be able to ask for help, to be able to put up their hands and say, hey guys, I need a bit of support today, you know. And this is ultimately the main objective of the Middleton Bike Project, you know. And again, it's, it's, it's really, we hope, the kind of phrase that we want to, we want to talk through bikes. Um, bikes are just a catalyst, really. It's still about people at the end of the day. It's about, it's about encouraging everybody to, to do the best we can to do the best we can in any kind of given situation, to do the best for ourselves, you know. So, at that, I'm going to wrap up. Um, this is an introduction. This is the first big project. We hope to actually bring it, as I say, to, to the community of Middleton. And we believe that it would be greatly received on there. And as and when the, the, the the, the other planned videos happen, we hope to put them online and we hope that everybody else will get an opportunity to see what we're about. And feel free, feel free to contact us. You'll find us on Facebook. You'll find us that, uh, that we're very approachable and everybody's welcome. So with that, I'm going to say 
Sure, thanks.